So today in the Brew Cave, we are talking starters. Yeast starters in particular, and how you can harvest from a bottle, sometimes, a usable yeast to ferment your next beer. So we're gonna build a starter, and then we're going to uh, use the dregs of a bottle of Uff the which was a beer produced by Ben Stick. Um, had it about four weeks ago. Here's the trick. When you drink that beer and you know there's lots of yeast in it, if it's not filtered, and you know that yeast is the fermentation yeast, you can basically save some of the beer. Now what I usually do is I never ever drink from the bottle. That's a dead, you're done, you're done. The potential for infection is too high. However, if you pour your beers, pour until you have an inch left in the bottle. Then pop the cap back on carefully, making sure not to touch the inside of the cap or the lid of the bottle. And then put a little foil over the top of that. Set it back in your fridge. And though you won't be drinking that beer, it'll stay good for two, three, four weeks until the next time you decide to make a starter. So today we are going to do that. We're going to build our first starter uh, wort and then we're going to introduce that kvike yeast into that starter and we'll see what happens over the next couple of days. The recipe for a DME starter is quite simple. One gram of DME, light, golden, you choose, okay. Uh, one gram of DME for every 10 milliliters of water in the finished wort. Now that doesn't mean you have a liter of water and you add 100 grams of DME. That means that the 100 grams of DME and water to make one liter is the number you're looking for. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some, some DME to the container. We're gonna weigh it out for a one liter starter. Now one liter on this container is quite low. I might even go for a 1400, so 140 grams, which gets me to a liter and a half. I, now I'm gonna to go to 12 because when you're boiling in an Erlenmeyer flask, one of the problems is they like to boil over. So your volume should be a little lower. It gives you a little more uh, runaway time. I'm going to use enough water to get to that 1200 mil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the DME to the container. I'm going to add some water to that and start to warm it a little bit. That'll help it dissolve. As that dissolution occurs, then I'm just gonna to top it up to 1200, our final volume. We're not gonna lose much due to boil over or boiling um, in, in an Erlenmeyer. On the stove, you may lose 50 mil on a liter to evaporation during that few minutes, that five minutes or so that you're gonna boil it. Um, really, you don't even need to boil it that long. It merely needs to get to boiling to be sanitary and safe to build a build a starter so with my scale zeroed now 120 grams 120 grams of dme is what we're going for and recall our intention is to shoot for 1200 mil a little more than a liter because of the size of a flask i'm using um and so we're just gonna Sort of vigorously mix this up. Um, don't worry about bubbles or anything like that. The idea is to get that that DME dissolved. And you can see already there's there's some on the bottom um, of the container. That's going to, as we start the boil, that will pull out. Um, the big thing I, I think to remember is uh, this stuff will boil over if you use the Erlenmeyer. So number one, um, if you're going to use a Pyrex uh, Erlenmeyer flask like this, make sure it's borosilicate glass. Don't, um, don't assume that because it says Pyrex on it, that it is borosilicate. Pyrex was a brand name. It's been used a lot. Um, I bought this from a reputable, reputable supplier, so I know that it is actually Pyrex, true borosilicate. Um, regular glass, if you did this and then put this on the counter, it would shatter. Uh, from the temperature differential if it even made it that far now the other thing we can do is we can add an anti-foaming agent generally i don't think this is a 
I don't think this is a necessity, but you can add an anti-foaming agent. In this case, I mean, I can add just a single drop, uh, and it's probably going to be too much. But there we go. We're going to add a single drop, and we'll see if that helps. In the kettle, that'll help you from boiling over, and it's no harm to the beer. And it, since this is a starter, not something we're going to drink. Oh, yeah, I can see it already. It's starting to eat away at the foam. Uh, quite rapidly, actually. We might see that foam disappear before we even get to a boil, uh, which is coming fairly quickly. We're over 65 degrees already. Uh, we're starting to see um, proteins starting to coagulate. That's proteins from the, uh, from the malt extract. Those are what cause our hot break uh, when we do a boil. And, uh, and they're certainly a part of that uh, malt extract that you purchase. Let's give this a little stir and see what happens to the foam. And there we go, the foam has literally disappeared. So that little single drop of an anti-foaming agent, that's firm cap that I use. Um, that's normally what I put into every beer I make. Um, I don't find a difference in terms of flavor. I don't find a difference in terms of head retention. Um, if you overdo it, then you can get some head retention problems, but you'd really have to overdo it. So this is truly just yeast food. It is unhopped pre-beer, basically. Unhopped wort. So there's also action going on in here from the boil. Uh, we're starting to see those proteins coagulating. That's the beginning of our hot break. Um, again, let me give it a little swirl just to help break those things up. Uh, be careful when you do swirl in an Erlenmeyer. Um, swirling the, the vessel creates a vortex in the middle. Vortexes are low pressure and boiling occurs at a lower temperature at lower pressures. So what can happen is you can actually swirl it to sort of get everything organized. Uh, and then when you set it back down on the burner, instantly it starts to boil out that vortex. And what happens is it will shoot wort right out the top of the container. Uh, be careful with that. Be careful with all of this. I mean, that goes without saying. We're talking about hot plates. We're talking about electricity. We're talking about wort. Let's be careful. Um, we don't want anybody getting hurt doing something that, um, frankly, that makes us happy. So don't be silly. Be smart. So at this point, we have proteins coagulated in there. They've bound up. Uh, the ions have attracted them to each other. Uh, the hot break is part of the process of denaturing those. Uh, those proteins will break down somewhat. And you will still end up with that material in your uh, starter, in fact. Uh, what will happen is the yeast will sink right to the bottom, and then those proteins will settle out on top, and you'll have layers uh, within that starter. Uh, layers within the starter that sort of indicate the different things, because you'll have a yeast layer, you'll have a, um, a protein and uh, waste protein layer as well, and then you'll have the clear beer fermented, uh, although without hops, on top. So we've got a nice little boil going on now. One thing that's important to do, if you use a stir plate, you've got a stir bar. Now the stir bar can either get uh, sanitized in a bucket of star sand before you toss it in, uh, but like a lot of people, I just sort of tend to, uh, you just sort of drop it in. You notice the bubbling? That's something you have to be aware of. It's good. We're going to turn this off and we're going to take it off the heat now. Now it is still boiling at the top. That steam is, is boiling. So what we're going to do quickly, oh, is get attacked by a light first. So we're going to put that back. You can see it's still actually boiling in the container. We're going to flash over the foil just really quickly. Make sure that there's nothing on it. I'm going to set it over the top of the container. I'm not going to cover it just yet because I want to do that with the oven mitt. And I'm just going to gently seal it over the top. And I'm leaving it. That's it. I'm not touching it any further. This is now going to sit and cool until it gets down to our pitching temperature for the yeast that we're going to use. In my case, I'm using Kvaik. The Kvaik likes about 30 degrees. We're going to let it get down to about 25 because I also know that when I do put that Kvaik in, the total volume is going to come up a little bit. And when I put it on the stir plate, and get it activated, it's going to heat itself up a couple of degrees. So I'm gonna start it a little low so that when its temperature rises, it doesn't get too high. 
So it has been a couple of hours. We've let the wort cool right down. Uh, so it's ready to go. Um, again, we've given it a chance to cool. Uh, some of that protein has settled out into the bottom of the container. Give it a little swish. I'm going to set it up on top of my stir plate here. Now, if you have not yet had the opportunity to use a stir plate, uh, they're lots and lots of fun. And they're great when you start doing uh, starters because they will take care of the every few hours run by and give a swish. The process um, of, of swirling the liquid will bring oxygen in and give the beer everything it needs. So, we talked about earlier bottle. Now, the, this bottle has been sitting in my fridge since I opened the beer. I was cautious to keep the cap clean. I didn't touch the mouth of the bottle. So that should be basically factory clean underneath the cap. I just tapped it back on. I'm gonna get that yeast swirled up in the bottom of this bottle so that it's nice and gray. We don't want anything sticking to the bottom of the bottle because that's everything we can get out of this beer um, is now in suspension. I'm pull the foil off in just a moment. I'm gonna loosen it up a bit for myself. I'm gonna get this cap off. There we go. That works too. And as I said, I'm just gonna flame, put this on camera here. I'm just going to flame the edge of the bottle to make sure that there isn't any yeast or anything from my fingertips that might have gotten on there, um, or frankly, any number of things. Um, and then we're just going to pour this straight in, and you can see how cloudy that is. So that's all of that suspended yeast and the and the uh, the Kvike culture now going into the Erlenmeyer. Haven't touched this, just gonna put it right back on the way it was. And then we're gonna start the stir plate up. Now remember, if you remember, we put the bar in while we were boiling. Um, we're just gonna let the stir plate pick it up. And then we'll turn the stir plate on just low at first. And we'll wait until we start to see, there we go. We'll wait to see our vortex starting to form in there and then we'll just give it a little a little more, we want it to be moving vigorously, not stalling out. But basically, if it's making sucking noise, it's going a little too fast. So you can back it off from there. And that's it. We're at basically room temperature. The yeast is now gonna to go to work. It's in its happy place. It's in a vessel full of sugary liquid that it can turn into something delicious. Uh, and we'll, uh, We'll, we'll take a look at this in a few days and uh, and see what kind of additional yeast we've got into the in this container. Well, it's been 72 hours since I made the starter. I have had it running under a bit of a blanket because it's uh, 19, 20 degrees, well, 18, 19 degrees in here. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that this was warm enough to do its fermenting. Now, normally it takes about four or five days for a fermentation to sort of finish up. But as I said, we were using a, a Kvike strain uh, that we harvested from this bottle. Uh, and so I shut it down earlier today to give the yeast a chance to settle. And here's where we're at. We've still got a little fermentation going on, but for the most part, it's settled out. Um, what I'm really happy to say is uh, we've probably five to ten folded the amount of yeast that's in here. So what I'll be able to do now, and you can see that layer of yeast on the bottom, um, nice and thick. What I'll be able to do now is allow this to settle out over the next couple of days. I'll pour it off harvest this yeast and next time I'm ready to make um, a beer I can build another starter double triple this volume up and use half of that for the beer and half of it will go back into yeast storage for the next batch so I'll have a permanent source of this yeast uh, available to brew with that's it that's all of it if you like this video hit subscribe uh, throw us a like ask questions or leave comments below and by all means uh, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so that you get notified when new videos come up thanks for watching we'll see you next time